Thank you guys for uh, for joining for this uh, um, casual processing presentation. I'm um, just going to take you through A to Z and uh, some some crucial steps along the way. Um, if you've encountered them, uh, maybe this will answer what the reason was. If you haven't and you do run into them, now you're uh, you're armed with a little bit more knowledge. So basically, uh, here you go. We got um, the history of the Kaiser roll. So uh, Kaiser roll dates back as far as 1760s. And uh, it's thought to be named after Kaiser Franz Joseph of uh, Austria. Uh, within the New York market, Kaiser roll is a major, major staple. Um, widely used between your delis and your food carts uh, uh, out on the street, coffee trucks, uh, so on and so forth. E even your bagel shops tend to always have a Kaiser roll uh, as an option if you, if you don't want to bagel. Um, when, it, when it comes to, to uh, manufacturing in, in New York uh, bakeries, Kaiser rolls roughly make up about 50% of their business. So all, all these bakeries are, are making Kaiser rolls and, and, and competing uh, uh, for the same business. When it comes to uh, ingredients and, and, and formulation, you know, Kaiser rolls are a fairly lean formula, but, but uh, your flour quality is of the utmost importance. You really want 13 to 14% uh, uh, protein with, within that flour. So high gluten flour. Everything else is, fair, is, is fairly low, 2% across the board when it comes to your yeast, salt, sugar, and fat. Um, but Kaiser rolls are a stiff dough. I'd say Kaiser rolls are probably your uh, second uh, stiffest dough next to a bagel. That's going to ensure uh, uh, proper stamping and, and, and ma maintaining uh, uh, the integrity of stamped during the flip, which we'll, we'll touch on all that later on during the presentation. And uh, yes, we all work for Parado, so we need to add flavor on top of everything we make. Uh, my personal favorite when it comes to Kaiser roll is Sephori Rigoletto, 2% uh, um, on top of that formula. And um, optional ingredients, uh, vital weak gluten. Vital weak gluten you're going to run into uh, uh, time, time to time. Um, bad flour, change of flour, uh, um, poor conditions, uh, um, so on and so forth. You need to, 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 to fortify a, a formula that you, you're going to see that added in. Um, majority of the Kaiser rolls in the New York market are loose packed Kaiser rolls. So meaning... They're uh, right from the oven cooling system, packed into the box just like that. There's no bagged Kaiser rolls. Uh, they're used the next day, uh, you, you breakfast and lunch, and that's pretty much the end of them. If it is a packaged Kaiser roll, well, now we're talking the mold inhibition. We're going to add in our CalPro monos for upfront softness. Extended shelf life would be our 230. That would be our, our, our choice for extended uh, shelf life within packaged Kaiser rolls. All right. Um, when we're talking the formulation end of it, Understanding that that Kaiser rolls are a very sensitive product, and we need we need a balance of right the right machine ability for diameter for, for our stamp, which we're gonna we're gonna touch on, and also our, our, our strength and tolerance. If, if if we need to formulate for a clean label Kaiser roll, I would go towards uh, your MP improver, our industrial one percent uh, all purpose clean label improver, but I would use that at three quarter percent. It, it, at one percent, it's gonna be too strong. We're gonna need machine ability added onto that roll. All right, so therefore we're looking at our extendo around a quarter percent, just going to give us the right amount of uh, uh, machine ability for, for a diameter of that roll. Non-clean label in a perfect world, that's, this, this is the formula we're, we, we would like to go to, that being the Calento Acti Plus, um, uh, one, one, one percent all-purpose industrial improver. That's going to give us our, our, our emulsifiers, datum, stuff that's going to allow us to uh, have enough tolerance and survive the abuse that the Kaiser will goes through. I don't use it at the 1%. I like it at a uh, 0.65%. And uh, we're going to need machine ability to that uh, on top of that formula. And, that, and therefore, I'm, I'm going to add the intense uh, extensibility around a quarter percent. So after discussing formulation, here's, a, here, here's your picture of the horizontal mixture, with, with, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. But the difference is your better bakeries are going to have them jacketed. Jacket, it means you're mixing under constant uh, refrigeration. Um, ideally, our dough temperatures need to be about 78, 80 degrees. Problem is, if, if you have guys that are just using way too much ice, and you're just mixing and mixing to break down that ice, and the dough is extremely cold, uh, it's going to yield a very sloppy roll. It's not going it's, it's to hold that stamp, and therefore, it's going to more than likely die out on you. Rolls are also very small and take, sometimes take a while to process. Anything too warm is going to age. Uh, much faster as, uh, faster on us, usually about halfway to uh, uh, last quarter of the dough. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of issues with, with, with dough size and dough rheology there. Um, picture on your right is j just a broad picture of an overall Kaiser roll uh, uh, system from the divider, overhead uh, 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 proofer to your stamping and, and conveyor. 
So talking about dividers, so uh, pr proper dividing and rounding, it, it, it's really key. Looking at your top picture, that, that's, that's a guy pulling out your, your carriage and those are your pistons. So above that is gonna be where, where your, uh, your, your, your dough is being held and it's, it's gonna be dropping into those pistons. Those pistons need to be pulled out, all right? They need to be cleaned and lubricated every X amount of doughs, all right? As, as, as that dough gradually feeds into that piston, that piston's gonna cut it off and it's gonna drop into what you're looking in the picture below. What that man's putting in there is your uh, rounding drum. Okay, so now you can see they, they have little holes in them. This is an eight pocket line. Okay, so when I say eight pockets, it's, it's eight lanes. Each one of those are considered a pocket, all right? So that dough will dump into that pocket. That, that, that uh, um, drum is gonna, is gonna rotate uh, uh, round and around and rub up against a, uh, a belt. So that's gonna uh, uh, cause friction. So what that's doing is basically what we see, um, what we do on a bench in the bakery where we cut, we cut a piece of dough and we're continually rounding it, rounding, rounding, building friction from our hand to, to the bottom of, uh, of the bench. That's gonna do that for you. These, these need to be maintained, they need to be cleaned. You're gonna have a lot of flour buildup, you're gonna have a lot of dough buildup. Uh, uh, that, that's, that's, that's very important when, when, when you're talking about your dividing system, all right? So seam control, seam control is key, all right? So, so making sure that after it's divided, we want to make sure that 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 we have we have a, 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 the tension side down, okay? So so you always got you, you always got to make sure you have seam controls. Seam control is going to ensure that we have the proper the proper side of the roll being the tension side of the roll up when we're when we're stamping. If we don't, it's going to lead to a lot of issues uh, uh, along along the way and and uh, um, not desirable not desirable big uh, Kaiser rolls. All right, so we can talk about formulation. Uh, we can talk about seam control, cleaning of machines, and so on and so forth. All of that doesn't mean a hill of beans if you don't have your, your proper line operator, all right? This guy is the one that's going to ensure that we have the proper coverage uh, of, of uh, flour on the roll, all right? He's going to make uh, consistent uh, adjustments to, to divider oil, making sure we're not bridging, making sure it's not sticking in, in, in the overhead dumping system going into the divider. All right, he's, he's adjusting weights from uh, start to finish. Keep in mind, Kaiser rolls are, are small. Kaiser rolls on average, I've seen three and a quarter. Sometimes I've seen as low as three ounces and as high as, as heavy as four. Uh, roughly, we're talking 500 pounds of flour. So just imagine how big of a dough that is. Uh, that takes a while to process. Now, we were talking an eight pocket Kaiser roll uh, uh, line before. An eight pocket Kaiser roll line roughly will push out about a thousand rolls an hour per, per line. So that's eight lines, eight pockets, eight lines. So that's 8,000 rolls. That'll, that, that, that'll eat through a dough fairly quick, but you see four pocket lines and you see six pocket lines. So you need to adjust, you need to adjust uh, uh, the weights and, and all those steps along, along the way. Uh, they don't, there, there's gonna be major issues that, that, down the road. Um, and you know, facility conditions are gonna change and the dough rheology is gonna change. So you gotta constantly make, uh, make adjustments along the way. So after, after we, we, we talk about divider uh, into our overhead uh, uh, proofing system, and it's in that overhead proofing system anywhere, I've seen eight minutes, 15 minutes, real slow lines up to 20 minutes. It's gonna come out and here, here, here is your, your, what we're talking about, uh, seam control. There, there it is now getting dumped into that cup picture on the left, okay? Now that's gonna be seam, seam, side, seam side down, tension side up. There's your flour duster. It's gonna give it, a, give it the coating before it goes under your pre-stamper, okay? So picture to your right is the pre-stamper. It, it's, it's a small tabletop pre-stamper, but it gives you a, a better idea of what we're talking about. Now you'll see the pre-stamper, it's just basically pushing that roll into the, the cup itself uh, before it goes through that final stamp, all right? So when we talk pre-stamping, so the purpose of the pre-stamper is basically to flatten out that roll, all right? We wanna just kind of knock the head off that roll. We want that roll to fill the cup up, all right? That's going to allow for, for it to uh, um, uh, get uh, proper, proper stamping for a final Kaiser roll stamper. But uh, also uh, a, a big, a, a big uh, um, step here is the mixture of the flour right before the pre-stamper. So you're going to get a dusting of flour coming out of your divider before it goes into the overhead. That's typical white flour. That's your flour within your silo. Over here, it's crucial that you have a combination of white rye flour and cornmeal, yellow cornmeal, fine cornmeal, ideally, okay? It's gonna be a, a ratio of two parts white rye, 
to one part uh, cornmeal. Um, they'll mix it together. Better placers are going to aerate it. They're going to sift it. Um, um, that's going to ensure and ensure that 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 holds that stamp of of the Kaiser roll. So when we talk when we talk stamping systems over here, uh, you'll see you got you got a row of eight stampers in the picture to your left. Uh, um, you see you, you see the depth of those stampers uh, uh, and the points on them at, at the end. Um, the picture to your right is is an actual stamper face up. So it says spring loaded. Uh, you got to make sure you cut your piercing the bottom of the Kaiser roll to make sure it doesn't burst in the oven and you lose that stamp. Now your better stampers are going to have a pre a, a, a spring loaded pin. So basically it's a little pin in there that as it, as it stamps down into the Kaiser roll, it's piercing the bottom, the spring releases, the stamp, the, the pin goes back up just, ju just in time for it to come back down on the next stamp. All right. So thing, things to look for here. Now, now this, this, is a, this is pretty important. If you ever get a call from a customer and he says, oh, I, I, have, I have a lot of rolls of, um, bursting in the oven. I have a, it's not holding, holding the stamp anymore. Find out, is it every roll or is it, is it sporadic? And if it's sporadic, where? Depending where the board falls and you see that roll coming out of the oven, is it in the same spot on the board all the time? If it is, nine out of 10 times he has a busted spring. So that pin is not releasing down from that stamper. It's an easy fix, maintenance can pull it out, uh, just replace the spring, put a new spring in. That'll happen time to time, but there's no way of telling until the bake. So uh, uh, important to look at right here. And then um, this picture on the right is what it would look like after it's stamped and it releases again. So you see, so you see the nice design within, within that Kaiser roll. So uh, final stamping steps that, that, that you gotta look for. It, it's, it's the depth of the cut, all right? It's crucial to hold that stamp. You wanna make sure that fi final stamp pierces the bottom, like we said, you gotta cut through per periodically, take a Kaiser roll, peel back the layers, look at it. Just, just make sure that, 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 it's, that, that it's cutting properly all the way through as it rotates down, okay? That you do have flower coverage between your layers. And um, this is a little trick that, that we, we've come up with through the years. It's the three finger uh, test, you'll see in that picture below. Um, if you can put your three fingers together and you can take one of those Kaiser rolls. Now, if you see in the picture to the right, the way that Kaiser roll is standing straight up, how, how deep that cup actually, the cut actually was. If you can turn that Kaiser roll over and place it on top of your three fingers, and that Kaiser roll stands still and does not flay over your three fingers, you're probably gonna end up with a perfect Kaiser roll. If it does, more than likely that, that, that roll or an entire dough is garbage. So, uh, so that, that's a little trick of the trade right there. All right, so Kaiser rolls, when we're talking about them, there's two. There's your face up roll, and then there's your face down roll. Uh, uh, they both have a purpose, and 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 they're both different. Um, uh, personally, the one the one you're going to see a lot more of is is your face down roll within the New York market. Um, although al al although they're 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 different, it, it's it the face down roll, the uh, face up roll, I should say, is really not that sensitive. All right, so after it's stamped, it, it it's coming down face down. It's going to go through another flip where it's just face up, and that's it. From there, it's going down to conveyor. It's going to get placed onto a board. Uh, um, I mean, onto a board. If it's if, if it's going into a freezer, it's going to be placed on a pan. If it's going into a proof, and it's never touched again. Uh, there, there, there's there's no abuse when it comes to a to a face up roll. Um, you see a lot of it within in store bakery. It's mainly a, an unfermented frozen dough process. So it's easy for the in store bakeries to just slack them out as needed, proof them, and uh, and and that's about it. A downfall to them, it, it, it really isn't appealing at all. It's just basically a hamburger bun with a stamp. It's just, just, just basically lines within that. Uh, the ones to your right being the face-up rolls, you can, you can see right there the, the, the definition to that stamp, the sidewall, how strong and tolerant that product was, uh, more symmetrical. Uh, it's, it's, it's just overall a, a, a better roll. So proofing parameters. Industry uh, uh, parameters are, are an hour. You know, you're talking about 100 to 100, 105 degrees Fahrenheit, 85% uh, relative humidity. Uh, you you want to make sure your, your your surface, when we're talking a face down roll now, it's dusted with cornmeal. All right. So 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 you, you got to make sure it's dusted with cornmeal, so you don't have a lot of, a lot of moisture built up between that roll and uh, and and the board. I've seen a, a lot of people get get creative uh, um, using dusting flour that that. Uh, rye flour mixture onto the board. I've, I've, I've seen people 
not even use any kind of flour. They said, oh, I don't have a lot of moisture with, with, with it, within my uh, proofing pro uh, process. I've even seen some people get very creative and use, use breadcrumbs, all right, um, to just uh, uh, save on waste. Uh, that's the worst thing to do. They get wet, they get tacky, that roll sticks, sticks to the board. Um, you need to have cornmeal. If the roll, roll sticks to the board, it's going to get abused, abused right before it's flipped at the oven, and it's not going to survive. Uh, it's going it's, it, it, it's also going to deal toward uh, um, issue, issues with the uh, 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 sealing of your stamp because of all that, that moisture. So uh, uh, you need cornmeal, whether it's fine yellow or it's coarse, but you need, you need to have a decent dusting uh, within that board. So retarding systems. Big in the Northeast, huge in the new, huge in the New York market. Um, became became popular in, in the 1980s. Bakeries were smaller. It was a 24-hour uh, uh, slow ferment process. They made everything during the day. They loaded up the retarder and it just stayed there. Pulled it out and baked it. Um, currently, it's a holding pattern for the oven. They, 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 as these bakeries have gotten busier, unfortunately, that that retarding system is not a magical expanding retarder. Um, I, I'm, I'm seeing them now down to four hours, three hours, and sometimes it's just about an hour to build a little tolerance to it. Uh, typically, 38 degrees, 42 degrees, those are ideal temperatures. I've seen them get as high as 50 some odd degrees. Uh, uh, and you gotta be careful with stuff like that. But they yield a, a, a nice golden leathery crust and, and uh, an amazing flavor. And you know, it just brings me to, um, to a, a project I ran into, uh, oh man, a handful of years back. Had a large manufacturer in, in New York that wanted to, um, had a ton of potential business um, and he needed to, to make an 18 hour retarded Kaiser roll down to about a six, four to six hour process because he didn't have enough space. What could we do to help him to uh, yield that 18 hour roll? So uh, Jimmy and I came up with a great idea. At the time we used uh, our intense crust color, which was an enzyme designed for uh, uh, increasing color on the second bake of a par baked product. All right, so uh, we, we added that to increase that color, that golden color that you'd get uh, for, for lacking the, the time within the retarder. Um, issues there also was that fermentation flavor that you get from, from, from the retarder. So we used the, uh, our, our panorome to pick up that fermentation flavor. We didn't have RTU sponge at the time. Um, and I increased steam within the oven to give us that, that shine and, and, and help with that leathery skin. It was great. I, I got to tell you, six hours, six hour roll looked like an 18 hour roll. Four was pushing it, but six was perfect. Um, you, you, you wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. So there, there's, there's ways of, uh, of manipulating things, um, but uh, you got You got to, it depends on, on, on customer's uh, facility. So after the retard, after the retarding process, we're talking of the warm, the warm up stage. So you have, you have two types of systems. You have a racking system, all right, and then we have our automated system. Regardless, we're looking for, for a temperature in, in, internally about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, plus minus average. Um, the racking system, what these guys like to do is they're gonna, they're gonna make a, a, a huge line from one side of the oven all the way to the other. And they're gonna leave the racks out there probably about 15 to 20 minutes before that oven, before, before the, uh, the oven starts up. From there, more or less, they, they realize that that roll has warmed up to, to where it needs to be. As they're pulling, ra as the rack's getting fed into the oven, or the boards, I should say, are getting fed into the oven, they're continually feeding rack in the back end. And that, that system has worked for them. Automated systems, picture, picture to your right. Your automated systems, they're never touched again. These rolls are stamped. They're placed onto the board. They're go, they're, they're, it's all on, on conveyor belts at that point. You're going into to, to a proofing system that's automated into a cooling stage, into a retarding system, and there's enough conveyor system uh, 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 as it's exiting the retarder to assure that it's gonna warm up to where it needs to be before it enters the, uh, the oven. All right, but once we get to the oven, the wing loader is, 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 a, is a crucial step here. It's, it's probably your, your last step and, and where you're gonna see if your roll's gonna survive or not survive. Now we're not looking at a roll right now, and the reason is, what you see here is your, is, is your sub roll. The picture on your left. Now, now, there's the wing loader, and it's and it's it's moving the sub roll from the loader to, to the oven belt. Now, do you notice the height on it on the picture picture to your right? There is no height. All right, it just basically rolls right off. It just slides slides right off that loader. Now, your sub rolls are probably anywhere from five to six ounces. Maybe some people make them even a little heavier. There's so much dough mass to that, and it's never even touched. It's slightly scored, and that's it. And it's just slowly rolled off that loader. It's not the same for a Kaiser roll. So here's your wing loader now for your Kai's roll. Look at the height, all right, of that loader. I would say that loader is anywhere from five to six inches, all right? As you can see in the picture to your right, as that Kai's roll drops, 
that Kaiser, those Kaiser rolls there are already turned and get ready to drop. It probably still has another th about two to three inch, three inches before it hit it hits the uh, the belt of the oven. All right. Keep in mind those sub rolls, like I said, five to six ounces. There's a lot of dough mass. That Kaiser roll, remember, three and a quarter, three to four ounces. That Kaiser roll is filled with nothing but air. Um, this is where a lot of these a lot of customers that are producing Kaiser rolls tend to use bromate uh, uh, solutions. Bromates become a security blanket for, for, for the Kaiser roll industry. It makes a bad baker good. Um, it, it, it fixes a, 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 lot of the, a, a lot of the processing parameters that, that aren't followed, uh, all, 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 the, all the key points that we, we touched. All right, so, so remember, uh, uh, the wing loader is, is crucial. If, if, if that formula is not strong enough, it's gonna collapse. As soon as it, as soon as it hits that, that oven belt, that's where you're going to see if it survives or it doesn't survive. If it starts to collapse, guaranteed that that dough, if not the whole bat, uh, the, the rest of your batches are all garbage if you didn't make any adjustments. Uh, moisture, like we were talking about that pro at, at, at proofing stage and, and cornmeal dusting. If there's excessive moisture uh, uh, built up on that board, those rolls are going to rip right right off that board onto that wing loader. It's probably not going to going to survive. So tolerance is imperative at this point. All right, just to give you a better idea, here's a video of what it looks like. So now we talk about loaders. Uh, here, here's the oven systems that you're that, that you're going to encounter when we're talking face down Kaiser rolls. So basically, bo both are tunnel ovens. Picture your left is your traditional tunnel oven. Uh, I've seen them anywhere from about 60 feet up to 120 feet. Um, the picture to your right, that's a. Th th this is a unique oven. So imagine if you had a, a, a 66 foot tunnel oven, and you cut it in three sec sections and you sandwiched it on top of one another. So now you end up with Three, three layers of 22 feet. These ovens were designed for people with small footprints that really can't fit in the traditional tunnel oven. They're both great ovens, okay? Um, there's an issue uh, with the design of your oven to the right. I don't care uh, who makes it, whether it's Mechatherm, uh, um, Mondel Forney, uh, you name it. If you get, if you get a, a question from a customer and they're telling you there's issues with the bake, uh, we're not gaining color. There's a, there, there's a flaw in the design of this oven with, with, with the center uh, deck. So it just does not receive enough heat. The heat transfer is not the same. Um, so what a lot, a lot of uh, uh, bakers have gotten creative. They've, they've done this system where they'll bake deck one, meaning the lower deck, two, middle, three, top. So they'll go one, two, three, back to one, skip two, go to three, back to one, and then they'll just continue one, two, three. Every X amount of bakes. Probably it's, it's anywhere from about five, uh, fifth to sixth cycle into the bake. And they find that works for them to, to, to pick up the, the, the color where, where it's lacking in the center of, the, uh, of that oven. Um, your bake profile on average, about 450 degrees. It changes along the way. Uh, I've seen 12 to 14 minutes, some guys a little less. I've seen some crazy things up to 22, 24 minutes, but roughly that's what you're looking at. All right, and then, so now, now when we're talking tunnel ovens, all right, so, all the way up in your right hand side says entrance curtain. Usually right before, right after it's flipped and it's on and, and it's on that conveyor belt going into that to, 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 to the oven belt itself, there's gonna be a curtain that it slides under. You gotta make sure that curtain's in good condition, okay? Because next is your steam, your, your steam chamber. Your, the curtain is gonna prevent the steam from escaping in the front of the oven. Now your steam for a Kaiser roll is about three to four PSI. That's a lot of steam, okay? Typically, in anything else, sub rolls, French bread, you name it, it's about half of that. But in a Kaiser roll, you need a minimum of three, three to four uh, uh, pounds per square inch. Why is that? So remember we talked about, about that stamp and the bursting of that Kaiser roll and everything we did to try to prevent it. Ex the excess amount of steam forces that stamp down. It also helps with the overall diameter of that Kaiser roll. Dampers on the left, dampers need to be closed. And your better facilities and your better ovens are going to have an interior curtain somewhere around there. 
So that exterior curtain is going to keep the steam from escaping in the front of the oven. The interior curtain is going to keep it from continuing down the rest of the oven. So right then and there is your steam chamber. It shouldn't be, any, it sh it shouldn't be traveling further down the oven. So when we're talking casuals, we're gonna and and all the issues that 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 you could you could encounter along the way. Here here's an evaluation. So we're talking first the casual on the left hand side. These are possibilities of what went wrong with this with this casual. So pro improper stamping, seam control could have been a major issue here. Could have it could have stamped into 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 the seam side as opposed to the tension side. Therefore, it didn't hold hold the stamp itself. Uh, dough was too soft, like we said. Uh, you got to make you got to make sure that that Kaiser roll Kaiser roll dough is fairly stiff. 53 53 percent plus minus hydration. Uh, dusting flour, dry cornmeal dusting flour. They could have possibly not used it. It could have been just one one or the other. It could have been white flour and uh, a moisture layer, and it just it sealed up over itself. Now talking the Kaiser roll in the middle, which is probably the worst one out of all of them. All right, here's possible issues here. Dough was too weak, so possibly they needed to fortify. Vital weak gluten, uh, not the right improver. Um, it's excessive moisture between, between the roll and the board where it just rips off that we need to be careful with to make sure you, make sure you have pro proper dusting cornmeal. Uh, um, dough is extremely soft. Remember the three finger test. If you place that Kaiser roll on top of those th three fingers, if it flays over it, the dough's too soft, it's not gonna survive. That's what you'll be seeing happen. You, you, that's what that Kaiser roll in, in, in the middle there will look like. Now, uh, the, Kaiser roll, the, the Kaiser roll number three overall, that's a good Kaiser roll. That's what you're looking for. If you, if, if you look at the side wall of that Kai's roll uh, and, and how high it is, how, how it maintained the integrity of the roll, uh, um, proper, stamp, proper stamping, uh, proper spread, it, it, overall, that is a good Kai's roll in, in comparison. That's, that's what you're looking for. All right. So remember um, the golden rules, Kai's rolls. You need to check that dough rheology. Make sure, make sure it's developed. Make sure, make sure, make sure it, it's the same start to finish. Uh, consistent weights and seam control, your, your line operator. He, he needs to be cognizant of what's going on. If there's stoppages in the line, the, the, the guy handling, handling the boards at the end keeps stopping the line. He has to, mon he has to monitor that dough. If that dough's getting too old, well, they got to make a decision whether they scrap it or not. All right, and watch the weights. Proper dusting flour. You need to make sure you have proper, proper white flour, uh, dusting flour, white flour at the beginning so it doesn't stick within the cups of your overhead system, okay? You need, to, you need to make sure you have the, the right mixture of dusting flour at the stamping system, a white cornmeal and, I mean, white rye flour and cornmeal mixture. All right, stamping heads are piercing the roll. Remember, check the spring loader. Make sure they're piercing through and that you have proper layers within that Kai's roll. All right, proofing and retarding conditions. All right, we don't want excessive moisture. Does our retarding conditions fluctuate that we're over oxidizing or burning out that dough? And sufficient steam. Remember, three to four pounds per square inch, three to four PSI. That's gonna ensure proper diameter. Uh, uh, of, of the roll and, and maintaining um, stamp of that Kai's roll. And obviously, uh, most importantly, never forget your applications team. Uh, um, we've seen it all. We, we've, we, we've encountered all these issues. Uh, these, the Kai's roll might not be big within certain markets, but anyone that is manufacturing Kai's roll has encountered, has encountered one of these problems, if not all of these problems. And uh, uh, hopefully you're, you're armed now with a, a little bit more knowledge and, uh, and uh, you know, moving forward, if there's anything you need, uh, reach out to one of us and, and we're more than willing to help. So, questions?